Hello everyone and welcome to Educers Clinics where we discuss some key topics related to common medical and surgical practice. So as we had seen last time in our medical statistics series, now we are moving towards descriptive statistics that is towards the end of the DCOVA framework. Today we are going to start the concept of descriptive statistics and very importantly we are going to understand the concepts of what is sample distribution what is measures of central tendency and what is dispersion. So these words, if you understand well, the calculations are very easy. What is important is that statistics has never been studied as concept. It has been studied as mathematics, which is wrong. You need to understand why we need a sample distribution, why we need a central measure and why we need the extent of dispersion. Okay. And in this video, then we are going to see the measures of central tendency. Dispersion measures and sample distribution, we will see in detail in the upcoming videos. So to understand the concept, let us take an example. Suppose you want to market the modern services that you provide for treating cardiac arrest at your tertiary care hospital. So now when you want to do marketing, you need to target a specific age and gender, right? When you see Google, you can see that mid-30s and mid-40s are very common age for sudden cardiac death, right? But what about your institute? Is it matching this? So you now try to find out data from your institute to understand the age at which the sudden cardiac death is most frequently seen at your institute. So can, you can target your marketing services towards that population. <coughs> So logically, the steps are first is identify the population size. Now, since this is a tertiary care hospital, you are catering to large volumes. So now you need a sample. You can't study the entire population. We have already seen that you need a representative and random sample when you can't study the entire population. So that the statistics that you calculate from sample can help in prediction of population parameters, right? So you use your sampling techniques that we have already studied in a video previously after sample size determination. Once you have done your sample, you organize and visualize the data. So now you have 500 age values in a sample, for example. Now how will you describe it and how will you analyze it is the big question. You can't estimate and start calculating 500 values in the sample. So what you need you need some values of these 500 values that are representing some specific characteristic of the sample, right? What I'm trying to say is that out of these 500 values, if you can identify what is the center point of the data, what are the extremes of the data, you know that all your 500 values falls in between this range, right? So that is what is basically the concept. So you need few statistic values that can describe the characteristics of the entire sample. So if you have three or four values which describe the entire sample, then these values can be easily used to understand the population parameters. What that means is that suppose out of your 500 values, say 36 is the most common value then you know that your population parameter is also somewhere close to 36, right? So this is just an example. We will see how to identify these specific characteristics of the sample so that you can identify population parameters in a representative manner. This is basically the descriptive statistics. That is few values which can describe the entire sample and thereby make an inference of the entire population. So this is your sample. You can see 500 age value. Very difficult to make out head or tail of this data. But if you identify these few values, you can describe the characteristics of the sample and the population. So now let's put these values on a chart. Suppose we start putting the values and we keep putting the 500 values in a curve. What you will see is that the values tend to aggregate at the center. Whenever you have a large data, 
the concept of statistics has shown that most of the values will fall towards the center of the data. Okay, so if your data of age is between 0 and 100, you will logically have a lot of data falling towards 30 to 60. Okay, so that is a rough center of your data and that is the measure of central tendency. Okay, so the blue circle is basically the area that you need to identify to know one of the characteristics of your data. Now, if this crowding is happening at say between 20 and 30, you know that most of your data is centered between 20 and 30, right? So wherever this blue circle or the maximum aggregation of the data is seen is basically the measure of central tendency. The black arrow shows the distance of a value which is at the center from a value which is at the extreme. And these are basically the extent of dispersion. You can see the left arrow is shorter, the right arrow is longer. What that means is that the data is more towards early age, okay? So the data is matching the Google that 30s and 40s are very common age groups, which you can very easily make out from this very rough diagram. So suppose you point all your data and then you plot a curve, you will see that a curve naturally forms such that some values aggregate at a specific point and other values are dispersed from that specific point. So this curve that you generate by plotting a large number of data is known as data distribution or sample distribution curve. Okay. What is the center most value or what is the center of the data is the measure of central tendency. And the extremes are basically the measures of dispersion. What that means is how far the values are from the center. This is a very important slide which explains the concept of descriptive statistics. Okay, You can see how the sample distribution is derived. You can see what is the measure of central tendency or what is the center of the data and how far the values are from the center, which is known as dispersion, okay? So measures of dispersion, right? So now going into central tendency measure, you can have a single number which divides the data into two equal halves, which is basically the exact center. What that means is 50% of data is on one side of this number and 50% of data is on the other side of this number. That is the exact center. Or you can consider each and every value of data and achieve at a central number, which is known as an average. But understand that if the data is highly dispersed, your average may be very different from the center of the data. However, it is still considered as a measure of central tendency. Another value to consider is the most commonly occurring value. Again, this may not typically be the center of data, but often it is the value that we need to find out. Okay, So there are three different ways in which you can identify the center of the data, which are the central tendency measures. Okay, Divide into two equal halves or consider each value and come to an average or measure a value that is most commonly occurring. Right. And these three basically are the measures of central tendency or the blue area. So the first exact center is basically the median, okay, where 50% values are on either side, where you consider each value and calculate an average that is basically the mean and most commonly occurring value is the mode, right? That is why mean, median and mode explain the characteristics of the center of the data and that is why it is known as measure of central tendency. So whenever you are asked descriptive statistics, the first concept is sample distribution, then the measures of central tendency that is mean, median and mode. So for our data now, if we want to describe this sample and thereby describe the population by using inferential statistics, the descriptive statistics of this 500 data is we can calculate the median, that is the exact center. How to calculate median for even numbers? 
center is n plus 1 by 2, that is 501 by 2, that is 250.5. What that means is we take an average of the 250 and the 251st value after arranging the values in ascending or descending order. And this in this data comes to 36 because the 250th value and 251st values are 34 and 38. In case of odd, say 11 value, the median is 11 plus 1 by 2, that is the sixth value. Okay, very easy to understand. You are finding the exact center. So if you have odd number, say 11, you want 5 on one side, 5 on other. So sixth is your value. If you have 500, you know that 250 will not be the center because then 249 will be on one side and the other side will have 251. So that is wrong. So you want 250 and 251 and take an average of them so that you are exactly at the center, right? So that is how median is calculated. <laughs> we want to consider each value as an important parameter or a statistic to calculate the average to describe the center of the data, that is mean, with sum of all by total, that is sum all of sum of all by 500. I have used Excel to do this calculation and the mean comes as 39.57. Understand that the mean is different than the median in this data. Mode is the most commonly occurring value and here the most common in occurring value is 35. Again, I have used Excel to do these calculations. Very easy to do them in Excel. So the mean, median and mode, all three are different. As I had already said, they can be different. But in large data, they describe the center of the data. So to understand the central values or the measures of central tendency, the similarities and differences between them, understand that mean considers all values to achieve center. Median is the only attention to have 50% data on either side or to be the exact center. Mode is the most commonly occurring value. Formula is very simple. Mean is sum of all by total. Median is n plus 1 by 2, right? All values affect the mean. This is very important point. So when your data has extreme value, what that means is that one number is 1, one number is say 10,000, and your central data is 20, 30, 20, 30, then these extreme values are going to affect the mean. So in these cases, median is a better option. So median is better than mean when data has strong extreme values. When all values are different, there will not be a mode, right? Because mode is the most commonly occurring value. So very important to understand is that mean, median and mode are unique values to each data set. What that means is that from a population, if you take six different samples, each sample will have different mean, median and mode. This is very important to understand because we are going to study data distribution that we are studying, but we are also going to study sample distribution or sampling distributions. And there you will get confused if you don't understand this point. So suppose you have a population and you take six different samples of that population. Each sample may have different mean, median and mode, which is unique to that data set. Mean, median and mode can be different. We have already seen. And in presence of extreme values, median gives a better estimate of center point of data. Central tendency helps in making out the blue part of the data. Now we will see the dispersion in upcoming videos and we will take descriptive statistics further. Thank you.